Good morning and happy Easter. We would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish people, as well as the Salish people, past and present, and honor with gratitude and the land itself and the Duwamish and Salish tribes. <clears throat> Our Easter bulletin may, found, may be found in the description. <clears throat> Excuse me. And our Easter readings can be found also in the description. Let us all take a moment to place ourselves in the presence of the Lord. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. And may peace be upon you and your house. Our opening hymn this morning is Hail the Festival Day, found in your online worship booklet. And as you are able, Please rise and greet those around you as we process forth. Christ is risen. The Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. 
This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is portions of Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 14 to 24. And your refrain is, On this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, God's mercy endures forever. On this, On this day, day the Lord, the Lord has, has acted. acted. We will rejoice rejoice and and be be glad glad in it. The Lord is my strength and my song, and God has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. On On this this day, the the Lord Lord has acted. We We will rejoice rejoice and be glad in it. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. On On this this day, the Lord Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord has punished me sorely, but God did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. On this this day, day, the the Lord Lord has acted. acted. We We will will rejoice rejoice and be be glad in it. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this this day, the the Lord Lord has acted. acted. We We will rejoice rejoice and be be glad in it. The second lesson is from Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> And our song before the gospel is God With Us, found in your online worship booklet. And as you are able, please rise for the gospel. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. 
He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This was the original ending of Mark's gospel, which was the very first gospel that was ever written. The next part of the gospel was actually probably added um, decades and decades later. So the person who wrote down the story of Jesus in the gospel of Mark leaves us with a bit of a cliffhanger. The way that the story was originally written was a cliffhanger, and it's probably why they edited on parts from other Gospels to complete it. But to be honest with you, I like the cliffhanger in the Gospel of Mark. So they went out and fled the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. It's a little bit more realistic And also, it maybe speaks to us in our own day and time. If we can imagine just for a moment how disorienting this entire weekend must have been for Jesus and his followers. They went in to celebrate the Passover. All of a sudden, Jesus was seized from them after a beautiful meal in which he shared with them the washing of feet and the command to love one another. Several of the disciples, particularly the male ones, had deserted Jesus. Only the women had remained there to watch their rabbi be crucified. Unless you've lost somebody suddenly in your life, you may not fully understand the pain and disorientation that the disciples must have felt. But I do think this past year, We have experienced some disorientation. If you recall a year ago, a little more than a year ago, when we went into lockdown, we had no idea what it was that we were facing. This new virus, we didn't know if we could get it by touching a box or if it came in frozen foods. We knew nothing, and there was a sense of terror and wonder and confusion at what would come next. I think the disciples must have felt that way too. But if they weren't able to get past the fear, those women who saw the empty tomb and heard the words, go ahead to Galilee and tell your brothers, if they hadn't told us, then it never would have been told. Now, of course, we know that Jesus came and visited others, but it leaves you wondering, it leaves you wondering, what, they're not going to tell anyone? They're just fleeing in fear and amazement. If it weren't for people who were able to overcome their fear, perhaps the resurrection story would not be known today. So like I said, many people don't like the resurrection story in Mark because it leaves so much unfinished. The women have not yet told others. There's no story of a reunion in Galilee in this gospel. There's no story of Jesus' appearance that we find in the other Gospels. No, this Gospel ends simply in fear and silence. And like I said, the earliest manuscripts do end with this cliffhanger. We know instinctively when we read the Gospel of Mark in this way and imagine ourselves in their shoes that many barriers will have to be overcome for the resurrection story to be told as it is today. As the women come to the tomb, they are already pondering their first barrier, the stone. That barrier is something that only God can overcome, or several men. And they know that they are alone, the lone women who have followed Jesus and want to come and anoint him and offer him a proper burial. They don't ask anyone to accompany them. And so I imagine along the road they are praying for God's help, for God's help and power 
to roll back that stone. As I said, for the women, they knew they wouldn't have the power to pull back that stone, and they discover that the stone is rolled back, but many more barriers are on the road ahead. The story says that the women told no one because they were afraid. We can understand their fear. They'd just seen their rabbi crucified. They had this astonishing experience of an empty tomb and the words of the angel go to Galilee. But what dangers await them there if they go ahead to Galilee? Wouldn't many of the disciples say, I think, I think we've had about enough. We've had about enough of following this, this dangerous path. A barrier they'll have to come overcome. What dangers would there be if they stayed in Jerusalem? What dangers would there be anywhere they went? And so most of them were hiding. Many years ago, I'm going to shift and I'll pull it back around for you all. Many years ago, I went to the National Cathedral. And in the National Cathedral, there are several different chapels, one for each, for many of the phases of Jesus' life. So one is the Bethlehem Chapel. It was the first to be built. It's a very old, traditional kind of English-looking chapel with beautiful stained glass windows and lovely um, statues and, um, and depictions of Jesus as a child and his mother. There is another one underneath the nave, underneath the nave, which is the, the large church, that is the Joseph of Arimathea Chapel, representing Jesus' burial in the tomb. It is echoey and empty and cavernous, and it captures the feeling of the emptiness that the disciples must have felt. But then, on the far corner, underneath the church still, is something called the Resurrection Chapel. It's probably one of the smallest chapels in the church, in the, in the great cathedral. And throughout that chapel, there are mosaics. The artists who designed that chapel felt that a mosaic was a very appropriate um, source of symbolism for what it was like to reassemble the resurrection story, to put themselves together with God's help after having been broken apart by witnessing Jesus' crucifixion and death. Each of the resurrection stories are told in that chapel, those that we will be piecing together in the coming weeks, but not the one that ends with just the empty tomb and the fear and amazement. As it turns out, one of my friends, um, his wife from seminary, Kathy Faden, makes mosaics. This one is called Light from Dark. And it can remind you of our Easter story for a couple of reasons. One, it could be the sunrise, early morning, just as the sun had risen, and she did intend to depict a sun. But this weekend, when I was pondering the empty tomb and the barriers that the women must overcome, to me, it looks like a stone rolled back. The barriers that the women will have to overcome are not just that stone, not just their fear and puzzlement. They will eventually go to the disciples, uh, the male disciples, and they won't believe them because of their doubt and prejudice. The men won't believe the women. They'll think it's an idle tale. And of course, all of the disciples would encounter the barrier of potential death for their belief in following the way of Christ. One of the reasons I love the Gospel of Mark is that that open-endedness of the empty tomb brings us into the story and makes us ask, what would I do if I had been there? Surely, I would have had the courage to go and tell the disciples. Surely, I would have stayed with Jesus till the very end. The Gospel of Mark has that kind of invitation in it, in its uncertainty. 
What would I do if I had been there? So the Gospel of Mark, in a way, leaves open to us the possibility that the story was never told. How would we tell the story? What will happen in Galilee? If Jesus is ahead in Galilee and Mark doesn't tell the story, is he there now? Is he there now so many centuries later? What does it mean to go to Galilee, the place where it all began? And so the Gospel of Mark, unlike many of the other Gospels, invites us to imagine the resurrection story happening now and for us to participate in it. For us, experiencing fully living life resurrection means that we also have barriers to overcome, stones for God to pull back. Our fears, the barriers of addictions or prejudices, the broken pieces of our lives. All of these, of course, God can piece together into something beautiful from pieces that didn't seem to go together in the beginning. Well, today is the day that, after so many centuries, we remember the resurrection of Jesus. It is also 53 years since um, the death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It's only fallen on an Easter Sunday three times in history, and today is one of those days. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., like many others, was able to remove the barriers of fear and prejudice in part because he no longer feared death. He was a resurrection living person. He knew that although it might cost him his life, the beautiful mosaic of the human family needed to be pieced together with our help. God sees us and knows that we are broken, but God shows us through the brokenness, much as God has through this year of COVID, that we are one beautiful human mosaic. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s belief in resurrected life, as well as his resurrected living, honoring the human mosaic, that fights for the fullness of life for the whole human family, made all of his work possible, and it makes our work possible, too. Resurrected living, just like the Gospel of Mark, asks something of, of us, something perhaps dangerous, something challenging. It requires the removing of so many barriers that may keep us from other human beings and may keep us from God. And we may try to remove those barriers on our own, but really it's only through God that it's possible for those barriers to be removed. And so on this Easter Sunday morning, when we know more of the mosaic of the story of the resurrection, um, that there's many more times when Jesus will come to them before his ascension, I offer to you this prayer for your Easter season. Wherever there are barriers, wherever there are prejudices, wherever there is hate, wherever there is self-loathing, wherever there are broken pieces in our own lives, may we ask God, like the women who came to the tomb. Holy God, will you roll back that stone? Holy God, roll back that stone. Roll back that stone. Holy God, roll back that stone. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and in hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of the holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. That all members of your church may find fresh strength and inspiration in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. glory. That the leaders of this nation and every nation may be granted wisdom and courage to lead all peoples into the way of justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us, Lord, Lord of glory. glory. That by your power wars and famine may cease throughout the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. glory. That God may give grace to all those whose lives are linked with ours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. glory. That with God's help we may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. glory. That the light of God's presence may be revealed to the sick, the weak, and the dying, and those who mourn, that they may be comforted and strengthened. We pray especially for the family of Chet Latimer. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. That the fire of the Holy Spirit may be sent upon God's people, that we may bear faithful witness to the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, yes, Lord, Lord of glory. glory. Maker of the universe, source of all life, give us grace to serve you with our whole heart, that we may perform, faithfully perform your will and joyfully participate in your creation to the praise and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. As it's been pointed out to me, we have not finished the prayers of the community this morning. I'm on Easter brain, friends. <laughs> so I invite your prayers for those whom you love and those who need God's love this morning.
as Bonnie mentioned, we pray for Chet Latimer, his wife Roberta, and their family at this difficult time as he is on hospice. of soul for Chet Latimer and comfort for his family. Molly asks for prayers for repose of the soul of Rodney and in thanksgiving that his journey home was swift and comfortable. Leanne asks for prayers for the grieving Wellman family and Drew. continued prayers for Ashley and Charisma who are fighting cancer. continued prayers for her friend Jennifer, for strength for her friend Sean, who is in recovery after an amputation, and for her father-in-law, Larry. sister, Linda. Amanda asks for prayers for Michael as he fights an infection. Jean asks for prayers for Julie, her cousin, who is suffering with cancer. Nona asks for prayers for Ashley will be undergoing sinus surgery on Tuesday.
highlight your Easter thanksgivings. What are you grateful for today? on Tuesday. Molly is ever grateful for this wonderful family of St. George. Tina is grateful for the gift of everlasting life through the risen Christ. Amanda asks for prayers for D'Artagnan, the cat, as the household faces difficult quality of life decisions regarding him. Catherine is grateful for all those who make this Easter service possible and enjoyable. Joyce is grateful for Bonnie and the St. George family. a lot of our thankfulness. He's thankful that we are for sharing the service with him once again, and he states he has begun using Whitty Road as much as possible to see the building of our new church. Nona is grateful that their son and three children survived a serious car accident without any serious or severe injuries, God was definitely watching over them. Scotty gives thanksgiving for progress on our beautiful new sanctuary, especially the shiny bell, and thanks for the restored relationship with her son, Noah. Mark expresses thanksgiving, saying that we have the best organist, pianist, musical musician in the state and probably the nation. Agreed. expresses gratitude for the beautiful flowers in the sanctuary this morning. Maker of the universe, source of all life, give us grace to serve you with our whole heart, that we may faithfully perform your will and joyfully participate in your creation to the praise and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And for a second time, we can always have more peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you.
Peace be with you. Christ loved us as him. Hold on a second, friends. I got to get up to the front. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. It's a musical. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, where am I? And as the table is prepared, please join us in singing, He is Risen, found in your online worship booklet. Thank 
your hearts. We lift lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is right right to give our thanks and and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, We remember remember his his death, death. we We proclaim proclaim his his resurrection, resurrection. we We await his coming in glory, glory. and we offer our sacrifice and praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. 
Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of all, our, our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father now and forever. Amen. 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 And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give and us this day our daily bread. bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread, the bread which we break. Alleluia is the communion of the body of Christ. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, breaking of the bread. One body are we. Alleluia. For though many we share one bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, the gifts of God for the people of God, holy things for holy people. Amen. Amen. And our song as we process in communion is Shepherd of Souls, found in your online worship booklet.
Shepherd of souls, refresh and bless thy chosen pilgrim flock with manna in the wilderness, with water
for our post-communion prayer, I want you all to notice something that you might not often notice. Now that we have shared communion, whether in person or virtually, the ombre is no longer empty, and the light that was extinguished on Good Friday or at the stripping of the altar on Monday, Thursday, is now lit again. The three days are over. The stone is rolled back. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord Lord is is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. 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 Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be among you and remain with you and those you love, both the living and the dead, this day, this night, and forevermore. Amen. 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 And the hymn to send us forth is All Creatures of Our God and King found in your online worship booklet. to celebrate this week. Happy birthday to Tammy Qualls, Brittany Ike, Elaine Parks, and Doug Hayes. We might be praying for him again next Sunday too. Our anniversaries, <laughs> our anniversaries are Bell, uh, Mel and Beverly Stevenson coming right up. And we prayed for the Gerritsons, the Schmutzler Gerritsons last week. I think you forgot a name in that list, Bonnie. If I recall correctly, isn't your birthday in that list? (laughs) I think you've been caught. (laughs) 
birthday blessings and anniversary blessings to all of you. May God fill you up with blessing that you may be a blessing in the lives of those whom you meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we do a distant blessing for you? Come into the camera. I won't touch, I promise. <laughs> but anyone who's still watching with us, why don't we extend our hands out towards Bonnie. Send up hearts to your Facebook Live if you're still there. Bonnie, we thank you for everything you have done for us. We wish you the best of birthdays and the best of futures. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessings upon you always, today and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Denise. Thank you to the whole worship team. <laughs> Family of God, our worship is over. Our service has just begun. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. 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 Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.